It's just past 10 GMT, and we start with rapidly developing news. Israel has launched an artillery attack against the Lebanese border. This comes just a day after the Israeli army concluded its biggest assault on Jenin in the occupied West Bank in 20 years. This attack on Lebanon happened near the town of Kfar Shuba in response, it says, to earlier rocket attacks from the area. Its military had initially said that they were carrying out a routine mine explosion. Israel and Lebanon are still technically at war, with United Nations peacekeepers stationed at their border. We'll, we'll have reaction from West Jerusalem in a short while. First, though, let's go live to Zena Khodr in Beirut. Zena, fill in the details of what happened and any information you might have on why it happened. Well, at the moment, there is a cautious calm. It was yet another cross-border fire incident. We've seen this happen quite often, really, in the past uh, few months. It has now been contained, the Israeli army saying that it shelled the area from which a a uh, rocket was launched from southern Lebanon into Israel, yet there is still no confirmation from Lebanon, whether from the army, whether from the United Nations, about that rocket attack. Um, both sides really have been careful uh, not to risk a major flare-up. So when Israel strikes back, they strike back in open areas. When rockets are launched from Lebanon, uh, they, they avoid casualties, because both sides really have a, a lot to lose if there is a major escalation. But clearly, this is a message. If you just look at the timing, um, Hezbollah has made it clear, the Lebanese group, the armed group that has fought with Israel in the past, it has made it clear time and time again that Israel is facing a, uni a unified front, the so-called resistance axis, the players of this resistance axis, whether it is Hamas in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, other groups in Syria, that if there is an attack against one group or one front, then all fronts will open. A few days ago, we saw Israel launch that major attack against Janine in the West Bank. A day or two later, we saw that ramming and stabbing attack in Jerusalem. And then we saw a rocket being fired from southern uh, Gaza, uh, excuse me, northern Gaza into southern Israel. And then the rocket that was fired from southern Lebanon into Israel. So there is a new military calculus, a new military strategy. And that is the message that is being sent to Israel today. Zaina Khodr reporting from Beirut. Thank you very much. Let's go to Imran Khan, who's in West Jerusalem. Imran, pretty much the same question to you, which is, based on your information, what happened? And also, what's the Israeli explanation for why it happened? Well, there was some confusion, actually, when the incident first took place. Initial media reports, initial reports from the army suggested that uh, it was a rocket that was fired. Then that was quickly denied by the Israeli army speaking to Israeli army radio. They said, actually, these are just minefields that uh, an unexploded mine may have just exploded. Uh, but then the Israeli army went down to the scene. They issued a statement. It's worth reading you a little bit of it. Following the report regarding the explosion adjacent to the town of Gajar, uh, soldiers arrived at the scene. It was revealed that the launch was carried out from Lebanese territory, which exploded adjacent to the border in Israeli territory. In response, the army is currently striking the area from which the launch was carried out in Lebanese territory. So they eventually did confirm it. They fired about 15 artillery shells into that empty uh, field. Now, this was a uh, short-range mortar not very powerful uh, and likely to be much more of a message uh, than trying to strike anything. Now, these things, as we've seen in Gaza and in other places, they're incredibly easy to do. It doesn't require a huge amount of manpower, two people tops. They get into a field, they put their mortar down, they fire it, and they, they're gone as quickly as they arrived. So the Israeli army, in proportional response, they needed to make a response, so they've just shelled their MTR area. And it's also telling that they haven't actually told civilians to leave. Now, uh, there have been no claims of responsibility so far for this, but if you take a look at the mortar shelling and that type of activity, it's much more likely going to be one of the local groups within uh, the area rather than, say, uh, Hezbollah. When Hezbollah strike, uh, they tend to hit things. This probably just a warning uh, coming out of that area, um, Gajar and, and Kofra Shuba, uh, from one of the local groups. But that hasn't been confirmed, and you know, but that's what people are now talking about in the media. The artillery shelling is now over, and it's likely that that's probably the end of that for today, certainly. Mm.
Imran Khan, thank you for the information. Thank you for the context as well. Uh, Imran Khan reporting from West Jerusalem. Let's go to Elias Farhat. You are a military analyst, a former Lebanese army general, and you're joining us now from Beirut. We appreciate your time. Uh, thanks for joining us on the program. What do you make of what happened, this artillery shelling by Israel? Uh, this shelling by Israel uh, comes uh, as a response on what so called a uh, rocket or a uh, uh, a shell from Lebanese territories which uh, uh, hit uh, a border area adjacent to the, uh, the Lebanese territories and the occupied territories, which Israel uh, considered it as uh, an attack on, on its territories. And uh, usually uh, Israel responds with the, uh, and in a the limited target and uh, uh, and the Israeli are keen not to uh, bomb uh, civilians or houses just only in the uh, arid area, which happens now. Uh, so I think that the the, uh, the rules of engagement are are really uh, abided uh, good by Israel and Hezbollah as well, because uh, the uh, this conflict is uh, is only in. Uh, in this area, it's restricted on this area only, and it didn't expand uh, south, or, uh, I mean, uh, west or east, uh, the, the area. Uh, the situation is very tensive in the area, especially after Israel annexed the Lebanese side of Al Hajar, uh, regardless of the United Nations delineation of the uh, blue line in 2000, and which was. Uh, made it clear that there is a Lebanese side uh, Sir. from this uh, and uh, another occupied side. So the situation is still tensive, uh, and uh, now we are Sorry, if I could jump in. Uh, waiting. So, Both yeah. our correspondents talked about each side, the Lebanese side, the Israeli side, sending messages. Um, and you could argue this is how Lebanon and Israel talk to each other, with what they're striking, when they strike, where they strike, how they strike, the amount of firepower used. How is this message, if we accept this premise, how is this message from Israel going to be interpreted on the Lebanese side of the border? Yes, I agree with the, the principle of messages. Uh, uh, when Israel annexed uh, the uh, Lebanese part of Al Gajar uh, village, uh, uh, Hezbollah sent a message by a small uh, rocket which uh, uh, blew up in, uh, in Israeli territories, but not so not far, uh, so adjacent to the uh, territories. And uh, Israel also uh, re replied to this message by bombing the suspected areas from where the, uh, this rocket was launched. So uh, these are uh, fire messages between uh, both sides, but uh, these messages do not... Uh, the, the, the problem. The problem is still uh, existing in Al Gajar, and maybe uh, uh, we see an escalation uh, for these messages uh, for more uh, violence in uh, the, the coming days. Mm. Israel is still uh, 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 annex, uh, annexing the, the Al Gajar, and the United Nations uh, forces did not uh, do anything to uh, uh, to return the situation. Uh, and the Gajar as it was before yesterday. Right. Uh, I mean, we are waiting. We are waiting uh, these messages to uh, transport to another uh, more violent message. Elias Farhart, former Lebanese Army General, thank you so much for joining us on the program.